Hello and welcome back to my craft room. I've got a fun little project today. I fancied doing a nice little bit of easy going slow stitching and I found this new to me channel on YouTube which has lots of ideas I'd like to try. Let me quickly show you. So this is a channel called, I don't know if you pronounce that, Bukau or Buku. And this particular project I'm going to try today is being shown by, I don't want to mispronounce her name, Aruna. I love it. I love some of these beautiful, simple little projects that she's made. The one I'm going to try today, there we go, there's this little, this cute little kind of travelling sewing kit, kind of little compact emergency sewing kit, which would be really great to take with you when you're travelling. Um, I'm going to adapt it a little bit. Aruna uses a spool in there, which I don't have. I'm going to adapt to that. Basically, this whole thing is built around a spool of thread. Um, I'm going to use something else instead of the spool, and I'm going to wind lots of different types of thread onto it. And I'm probably going to extend the long piece that wraps around so that I can put more inside. So I'll need to adapt maybe the size of things just a little bit, but the basic principle I'm going to, I'm going to be following this. She very helpfully provides a PDF, which you can go to here, and I've just printed that off to use as my pattern. So it's just a lovely, simple, sweet little project. And I think I'm probably going to do a bit more stitching onto mine as well just because I love the stitching. Just a kind of little easy going quick project which I should easily finish this afternoon I would think. If not I'll just do the finishing details this evening. For my materials I'm going to use, I've got I've got the pattern printed off and instead of the spool <laughs> I've got an endless supply of these. These are tonic. Well, actually, not anymore because I've, because I've been penny pinching. I've stopped having these beautiful uh, Fever Tree tonics. They're my favourites, Fever Tree. So these are off the Fever Tree tonic bottles. But I mean, any any little bottle caps would do. And I reckon if I stack these together, they will do instead of a spool. And you, and they'll be perfect to wind to wind thread around. I reckon that will fit nicely in there. Hopefully it will anyway. I didn't have any empty spools sort of exactly the same sizes. And for my fabrics, I'm going to use some of the lovely pieces that I got in my recent massive haul of bizarre scrap packs. <laughs> I will link to the bizarre scrap bags opening just in case you're interested. If you saw the, the video where I was opening four bizarre, four scrap packs from Bazaar, uh, you'll have seen that I said I was going to just throw all of them all the contents of all four packs except for the trims and I've got the trims and buttons and beads and things in there I was going to throw the contents of all four packs back inside the sari bag that they all came in tied up the top so nothing would escape and threw it through my delicates wash and I, I took some photos actually I said I'd post them on Facebook and I've only just realized I forgot to do that I'll do that later today but um I thought I'd just show you how they didn't, you know, they came out perfectly fine. I haven't ironed them. I just put them through a delicate wash and draped them over the clothes horse in my conservatory to dry off. And um, and this is how they came out. So I threw everything in there, cottons, silks, um, even the embroidered kind of pieces like this. Everything except these two, actually, because I thought these looked as if they would, would run. And in fact, Joe from Bazaar has confirmed that these are done with a, an alizarin dye um, and that, yes, probably they would run. So I was wise to keep them out of the mix. But everything else just went straight through the washing machine. So I'm going to pick... I've got the contents of a, a pink pack, a blue pack, a black pack and red. So I've just got to decide which colours I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with. And probably because this is only really going to need small pieces, there's no point in me cutting into a huge piece. I'll use the smaller pieces first. Like so, if this would actually, if this is big enough to do it with, that would be quite a nice one to use. So I'm going to have a little dither a minute, decide which which pieces I'm going to use, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, I had a good rummage through and chose my pieces. I dithered a bit. I, I thought about just doing the inside just a plain white because I got some of these plain white cotton pieces I could have used. Then I decided I want something a bit more vibrant. Um, I looked at this. I love this colour. I love these two colours together. Um, but this stuff was quite flimsy. 
for that. Oh, it's lovely for some things to be like this, this lovely, fine, sort of transparent cotton is, is lovely for all kinds of things, but not for this. I needed it to be a bit more solid. So I looked at this, which is obviously the sleeve off of something. That's one of the things I love about these packs. Um, and that is the right kind of fabric, but I'm not sure I like it with that. And actually it would make a nice inside for another one with a different colour outside. So in the end, I've gone back to this one, but I've doubled it up. So I've got everything I need is ready. That's what I'm going to use for my insides. I checked that. It's really helpful. They say to make sure that you print it off at 100%. So with my printer, there's a there's a sort of extra settings bit you have to go into, and sometimes it defaults to 80% to fit it inside the paper, but you have to make that 100%. And you can check you've got it right because they've helpfully printed a one inch square there. So I can check that that matches exactly one inch, so I know my size is right. Having said that, I have extended the length. Um, so I've cut one piece in this. I've got some of this stuff. Um, she says to use like a light batting or something. I've got this, which I really like using for this kind of thing. It's one of the, it's one of the pieces that came in that parcel from B Henderson. Uh, B makes kind of high end. Um, curtains and, and um, soft furnishings and uh, she does these parcels of all of her off cuts and things <laughs> brilliant um, she said she'll send them out to people just for the price of the postage which is fantastic because she's had a problem finding a home for, for the off cuts and she can't use them all herself so yeah there's all kinds of the lovely kind of um, nuts and bolts stuff like this because this is a curtain interlining it's like a like a like a soft brushed cotton that's really nice for this kind of thing when you want kind of a bit of, bat of a batting but you don't want anything too thick you just need a little bit of body to it um yeah and she does all kinds of um linens and designer prints and all kinds of things if you're interested in getting hold of some of them uh b will put them into our makers market in the discord community every so often she says she's got an endless supply but obviously it takes her time to put the put the photos up and things so you can always message her in there as well if you're interested in getting hold of some. She's called Bee Hen <laughs> in um, in our Discord. Anyway, so yeah, I've I've used that and it's perfect. I think it's gonna be perfect for this. So I've cut one piece of this inside. This is this will be the kind of felty bit the needles go into. Um, and I've also cut two of the circles, the end circles out of that. I cut another two circles out of the card. Um, the larger circle I've just cut the two kind of outer fabric pieces and then for this biggest piece which is the one I've extended just by a bit um, I've done this is gonna be my outer fabric two layers of the inner fabric and a layer of my curtain interlining I'm using for for batting I've also got a normal kind of sewing thread in a kind of coordinating colour. Don't mind if it shows a bit. <laughs> and then I've got this embroidery floss, stranded embroidery floss, um, for a bit of decorative stitching later. Got my needle, got my scissors, got my whatnot. <laughs> I found my whatnot, thank goodness I missed my whatnot. It turned up in a project bag. I'm ready now to start putting this together. Now I need to make sure I get it all in the right order, don't I? Right sides together. Obviously this doesn't have a side. For the proper tutorial, you're, you're better to go and watch book who, book how. <laughs> I will link to that video. Okay, so I haven't cut this very accurately. I don't think it's gonna matter hugely. Okay, I think that's the right order just put a few pins in not too many could use clips it might be less annoying the idea now is I'm gonna sew all the way around this and I could get a machine out and do it really quickly but to my mind I'd rather just sit and quietly do a bit of hand sewing and listen to an audiobook or something chatter away to you guys <laughs> so I'm gonna sew all the way around I'll probably start about here go all the way around and just leave a little gap here to turn this through I'm just going to do a little small running stitch. I'm not even going to bother doing a back stitch. I don't think it needs to be that strong, especially as I'm planning to do a lot of just lines of kind of canter stitching, straight stitching. 
all across it anyway so I don't think it needs to be more than that so I'm just going to do a small running stitch all the way around there it won't take me very long at all once I've done I've had a quick look through here as well so these are the bits and pieces I got in those four packs that I opened these are the bits and pieces I got with kind of thing they always throw a few kind of little doodads and things in um so there's all kinds of things in here I, I can use um I, what I haven't got is a is a cord that's ideal there's this cord um which i might use i don't know I'm, i'll wait till it's till it's done before i decide i could use a bit of this recycled spun kind of waste threads i don't know if it's ideal for this i might just plait do a little bit of plaited like i've done here just plait some embroidery thread to make my little closure so i did find Oh, a shisha mirror's there. Oh, it's escaped. I might do a little shisha mirror on either end, on the on the short, the yeah, on either end. <laughs> and there's also these things. These would go on either end as well. So I'm going to decide about that later. Maybe I'll keep these out. Now I've got a couple of buttons here. I need a button closure so I think it'll be one or other of those I'll decide about that later so let's leave those both out I could also use these on the ends stitch them on do a bit of fancy fanciness around them couching them down or blanket stitching them down or whatever so we'll see we'll see I'm gonna pop all that back in there for now and then some of the beads and things there's a little bag of beads cut there are a couple of little bag of beads among among these um, I could put on the end of the cord that I'm gonna that I'm gonna make. Right, I'm just gonna start stitching now. Where's me whatnot? Have you seen it? I don't know what the seam allowance is. I'm not gonna worry about it too much because I'm gonna stack up my bottle caps to fit the space I've got. <laughs> so I'm just running a small straight stitch. Fairly small, fairly neat. I'm not getting too finickety about it because as I say I'm going to add quite a lot of straight stitching on for decorative purposes and um, that will strengthen everything anyway. That's all, I'm, that's all I'm doing. I'm going to work my way all around and then I will be back. The only place I might do more than just a straight, more than just a, um, um, a running stitch is on the corners. I'll probably go into a back stitch on the corners and possibly around the curve. I'll see how I feel when I get there. I've stitched all the way around. It's easier to show on there. <laughs> just leaving a little gap there. I went into a little bit of back stitch just on the corners. Um, but I stay, I just did straight stitch everywhere else. Um, hopefully that'll be fine. If not, I'll turn it back out and uh, and reinforce it a little bit if I need to. But so I'm just going to trim these corners now, especially where this thicker stuff is. Just uh, started watching a video with um, Christine of Create and Craft with Christine. Oh, she just uh, does so many inspiring projects. Um, she's just started doing. A, a, a zipped pouch with using this amazing fabric that she hand painted herself and um, it looks beautiful something that I've never been able to get my head around is putting zips in so I'm going to see if uh, maybe Christine could help me to <laughs> face my demons just clipped a bit and um, clip my corners, might just clip a little bit more of that bulk away and now I'm going to turn it the right way out. So I've got to make sure I turn it the right way, I don't want to turn it there, <laughs> I want to turn it here. Do love those colours together. One of my mottos for this year is embrace the wonk. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely there's definitely some wonk going on here. 
turn these edges under where the opening is and just do a little kind of ladder stitch to to close that up that's quite a sturdy little piece now or I might just do a little uh, a blanket stitch around the whole thing in my in my contrasting thread now let's let's just close it up so so that's all secure and then I can decide oh, windy old day outside today but I determined to go out for my daily walk part of my new campaign to get uh, less fat and more fit <laughs> Poke that end inside. There you go. So the end with the the end with the knot is inside. And I went in on the the blue fabric. So now I'm just going to go across to the pink fabric. I'll take a small stitch along like that. Then I'm going to go up to the blue fabric. Take a small stitch along. back to the pink blue there we go do that all the way along so then you get um, a reasonably invisible join I could take that pin out now it occurs to me that you could also make these little things if you used if you used a little piece of cardboard tube inside instead of the um, spool you could actually put other things in there as well couldn't you or emergency supplies like maybe a plaster or you could fit a thimble it would be a good place yeah even like your um an emergency supply of your regular pills or you know things like that yeah what i'm going to do now is take a couple of strands of embroidery thread And just do some straight stitching back and forth. So obviously it will show this colour against the pink inside, which I really like the idea of. So I'm just doing a small, reasonably neat running stitch again. And I'm going to work from this side because this is the side that's where the <laughs> The thread is with the stitching is really going to show so um this is the side i want the stitching to look a bit neater if it comes out a little bit more wonk on the other side it's not going to show so much because it kind of matches i mean you can see it oops but you know it's not going to be so obvious is it so i'm just gonna sit and chill out now carry on watching a bit more christine <laughs> hoping she can get me over my zip phobia and um, cover this piece with with lines of stitching partly because I like the look of it and partly because I just find it very relaxing to do and then I'll be back to do the next step right I finished doing all that straight stitching you can see I'm definitely embracing the wonk. I think that just it adds to the charm for me. <laughs> so now I'm just going to go around with a thread that kind of almost matches the pink inside fabric. Obviously it'll be more of a contrast to the blue and I'm just going to do a little um, blanket stitch just to neaten up these edges. One of the other projects I've been working on is my Dictionary of Stitches and again following along with Create and Craft with Christine. <laughs> um, I spend a lot of time in Christine's craft room I think and um, I'm just about to start the B stitches so and I know there are a whole lot of different variations that Christine covered on um, blanket stitch so really looking forward to that. I feel like this time I'm going to have to swap to the other side because this is the side that is going to show. 
I started this the wrong way around for the way I like to do blanket stitch because I was going to go from the other side <laughs> but don't matter Unlike Christine, I can't talk and sew. So I'm going to go back to Christine. <laughs> and I'll come back to you when I finish going all the way around this piece with the uh, with the blanket stitch. It won't be long. Whew, well, I finished this little piece. Went off out for a break for a bit of a, a walk, even though the weather is vile out there. I've come back feeling very windblown. A little bit damp, but actually quite refreshed. So I'm glad I made myself do it now. So, um, I'm ready to move on to my next step. I'm actually really enjoying the contrast of these two fabrics, and I, I even like the look of, yeah, you know, I like the look of that little roll with that little stitching. I changed and did, I took out the blanket stitching that I'd done and went for this little kind of overcast stitch instead, you know, just a, a kind of a whip stitch, really. Um, just I thought the blanket stitch looked a bit too much, a bit too sort of clumsy. So now I'm ready to move on to the next bit. I need to make my little ends. Um, so this, this felt piece will fit in here when I'm all done. And I will probably do some kind of pretty edge stitch around there as well. Not sure how I'm going to finish that. At the moment I so like the look of that but I'm not sure I want to cover it up with the felt so <laughs> I'm not sure. I'll make that up as I go along. Next thing is these ends. So for each of the ends I want to take a piece of the fluffy stuff that I'm using and, uh, and one of the cardboard pieces and then the idea is that I'm going to do a gathering stitch all the way around here and pull it in like you would if you were making a Suffolk puff and then I'm going to decide how I'll finish it. So let's do that running stitch. Typical April weather here at the moment. Can't decide what it wants to be. Spring is definitely in the air, but we're back to feeling quite wintry again today. Okay, so I'm just going to do this about, I don't know, half a centimeter in from the edge. Quite nice to use a fairly long needle for this because then you can get lots of gathers at the same time. A couple of stitches were a bit big there. Well, I haven't exactly kept um, uniform distance from the edge but it's not going to matter for this. Right so the idea is that I put my cardboard disc and my lining bit, I put the lining bit down Oh, hang on, which way around do I want it? <coughs> cold, the cold air and the wind has set my chest off again. all secured there and the idea is that this will kind of roll around these discs will be one of the discs at either end I would quite like it if I can make that little pink strip show I think I think it looks really I like I just like the look of it as a couple of different ways I can do it I could either cut another small strip of fabric just glue it there like they show in the tutorial and put that on the inside and have this on the outside quite simple if that was the case I think I'd put my padding on the outside though for the feel of it or I can choose to have this on the outside finish it with a button or sequin or contrasting fabric or whatever whatever I want to do to finish that off I've not got it quite central but it's okay because I'm going to cover it so if I had a button a 
big enough button. I've got millions, I've got millions of buttons. Well, I've probably got thousands of buttons. <laughs> so I could just finish it like that. And wrap that around it. That's quite nice. I'd need something a bit bigger. I could use one of these. I know I've got more of these stashed away as well. So I could just stitch one of those down. Now that would work quite well. I'm quite keen on that idea at the moment. Or I could do a bit of shisha embroidery on here. Finish it off with a bit of shisha. That's what I was planning to do. But now I've seen this. Hmm. What do you think? I wish we were really here so that I could uh, you could tell me what you think. Get, get a second opinion. That actually does look really nice. I could always do shisha on the other thing that I'm going to be doing. Okay, I just need to check. I have got another one of these though. I think I have in my box of doodads, bag of doodads. There we go, there's one. Whoops. I'll be making some gorgeous danglies with these soon. And some of these bits and some beads. I'm going to be doing boho beads and tassels and silk balls and all sorts of plans. I think the thing to do is to tack this on first and then I'll maybe do a bit of extra decorative stitching around it as well. So let's pull this, yeah. Yeah, I think I might make another one in a different colour combo and try putting a little bit of cardboard tube in instead of the spool. That's because I think either you could use it for more other sewing supplies, yeah, like the uh, needle thread or a thimble, some buttons, or you could use it for stashing other things like a hotel key. couple of paracetamol. Enough money for a taxi. <laughs> Whatever emergency things. <laughs> in the old days when I used to actually go out in the evenings, I used to always have the uh, enough cash to get a taxi home. Emergency money, just in case. Not in my purse, not in my bag, nowhere, somewhere like completely different so that if I lost everything, I would still be able to get myself home. In the really old days when I was in my teens, it would have been enough for a phone call <laughs> from a call box. These days they've all got mobiles, haven't they? Now I'm thinking I want a little bead in the middle of that as well. Or a tassel. This is getting really fancy now. <laughs> This is quite cute. We've got two of them. Oh, we have. We've got two of them. Okay. I want these. I want these. It's got to be these. And get hold of it. Lovely little kind of jadey coloured glass beads. Will my needle go through? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Haven't secured the other end yet. Oh, dear me. I can't go through to the back because it's cardboard. Or oh, can I? Will it go through? Yes, it will. <laughs> cute it's probably a bit over the top but you know I just like it <laughs> now I can just secure this here because this isn't going to show this it'll all be on the inside I'm going to do the other one the same as that and then I'm going to do a little bit of extra embroidery around here. Just possibly just a blanket stitch, perhaps in the contrasting thread. Yeah, just to secure it all down and finish up those edges. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Yeah, so I'm just going to do a little, a little blanket stitch like that all around the edge of this, just to, just to sort of bring it all together really. So I'll do that on this one, then I'll make a second piece and then it'll be time to put these together. 
So I'll carry on and do that and I'll be back in a moment. Right, so I've now got my outside piece ready and both my end pieces. So what I need to do now, if I've understood it right, is I need to stitch these pieces around here probably to about there. I just need to leave enough of an opening to put the, the well it would be the spool inside um, but I'm going to be using these <laughs> tonic bottle caps Oops, instead which I hope are going to work. I mean if they don't work I can still bring a spool in but I think I can make this work and I'm going to try and join this I, mean, I, I could do it I could make it an invisible join I really want to I like the contrast of this of this deep kind of fuchsia pink so I'm going to try and do it so that a, a little tiny strip of that fuchsia pink actually shows I think I'm going to go with a with a ladder stitch but make it quite a small ladder stitch so I'm just going to start kind of a couple of millimetres in from the edge and then go into the go into the blue pick up a tiny stitch Need to make these quite small stitches because this does need to be quite a strong seam. Now going back into the pink, pick up a tiny stitch of the pink, back into the blue. So I am doing quite tiny stitches, tiny for me anyway. <laughs> So I think that would just show enough of that little edge of the of the fuchsia pink. Um, so I'm going to work my way round. Do about. Um, oops. There, just enough to be able to still get the bottle tops or spool or whatever. Yeah, so I could probably go to about there. And then the, and and then leave that part open, and the rest of it will wrap around. Okay, so I'm going to carry on working my way around this, and then doing the same with the other with the other end, and then I'll be back. Finish stitching my pieces on either end. I really like how that's looking. I think that's really cute. And so now what I've got um, two different ways I can do the the little spool or whatever for the middle. So I've just cut this. I had um, <laughs> saved a whole load of these cardboard tubes and in my recent uh, craft room clear out I made myself get rid of a whole load of them but I did allow myself to keep just a few. And to be fair I would have been really annoyed doing this project if I'd just thrown all those tubes away and I didn't have this one little piece. So I've just cut a tiny piece over there and what I'm thinking is this is another piece that came out of that uh, batch of um, scrap packs from Bazaar and it just happens to be exact the right size and a perfect colour to go in here so I'm thinking I'm going to glue this on here to make a little tube that fits inside that you could either wind threads around or put other little bits and bobs inside whatever you needed to uh, carry because I've got enough of these ones to make another one of these in the same colours so I think I'm going to do the two options and then I've dug out six of these fever tree <laughs> tonic bottle tops which I thought I could just keep separately and stack together but they keep going all wobbly so I think I'm gonna actually glue them together using this glue which will stick almost anything and then because they've got these because they're bottle tops they've got these automatic kind of notches around ideal for wrapping thread around and then they'll they'll pop in there like that I also need to stitch my button on make a little plaited cord for my closure and I need to add the little piece where the pins and needles and things will go but I kind of feel like I like the look of this and I don't want to lose it so what I'm going to do is just cut this off here yeah 
they just fray away a bit easily this fabric just done a little bit of a purposeful fraying let's neaten up the edge a little bit I'm just going to have a, a rectangular piece there and that will go here still feel like because I like the look of the stitches I think maybe I'll I'll just um stitch this down at one end glue these bits together so I'm nearly there really it's been quite a quick little project okay just glue that onto the tube hopefully I've got just about enough to tuck inside to neaten up those edges Ugh. there we go that's quite a nice neat finish I could put a bit of braid there if I wanted to but that's actually matched up pretty well not bad at all right, let's just put a bit around the inside here nice neat finish let's do the same on this side so there we go that would fit in there that way as a little kind of travel caddy for little bits of jewelry pills a key I think that's really cute I'm so pleased with that okay we need to get the button on I need to hope that these are gonna stay stuck need to give them a bit, bit longer than usual probably um, and if it doesn't work I'll get the hot glue gun out but hopefully that'll be fine okay so I need to stitch this on and I need to, to make a little plaid cord now um, I'll use these three colours so I've just folded all three of them in, in half I've lined them all up together, folded them in half. I'll just put my finger in the loop. I'm just going to keep twisting. Got a feeling this won't work out long enough and I'll have to do it again. But if so, I'll use a little bit of cord for something else. Just want to test out what it's going to look like, really. So I'm going to keep winding and winding and winding until this looks quite tight, much tighter than that. Pretty, pretty tightly wound now. And then I'm going to put the two ends together hold the middle and just let them twist together hmm. so it's quite pretty but it's too short and it's too thick the colors are perfect so now I'm going to do it about hmm twice as long and I'm just going to do two strands of each colour instead of six and I'll do exactly the same process I just showed you I'll be back in a moment I've done that again so I used about two meters of each colour just two strands of each colour and I think that's about the right sort of thickness that's made a nice sturdy enough cord and it's quite cute I threaded one of the little beads that was in that little pack um, onto the end and tied a big knot to stop it coming off and um, I've just threaded up a needle ready to stitch it onto hang on now I want to stitch it onto here and this is a little tip I saw the other day someone doing this she's making toys but it works for everything so the idea is that um, you take your length of thread put the two ends together and thread them through the eye of the needle so then on the other end you've got a loop which of course makes it very easy to do a double to, to do a little knot and not end up with with an end if you see what I mean so if I want to put my little button say here I can just take a little stitch put it almost through put my needle through the loop and there we go perfect well I never thought of doing that before and I've got no end to worry about or anything so now I'm going to tie I'm going to stitch rather the 
cord on first and then I'll stitch the button over the top of it right so I'm just gonna anchor that on the back here's my um, section of bottle tops they seem fairly firm now I've, I've wound some of the leftover threads on them just to show what you would do and then uh, as I say you could put little whatever's in there or shall I find a couple of let's just put some beads in there just for example there we go I could have buttons or pills or whatever in there and then this little wind around like that and close that way I just think that's really cute I'm filled to bits with that okay let's try it with the other one you could put the spool inside there the spool of thread inside there I do still need to stitch this on so chuffed with this I'm so chuffed with that <laughs> needles I could put one of these in here as well these little needle threaders could go in it could go inside inside there along with my reel of thread and then when I'm done roll the whole thing up wind this around and close it it's so cute I'm really I'm really really chuffed with that you know when sometimes you make things and they're a bit mm, I didn't turn out how I wanted it and sometimes you make things and you think oh perfect this is one of those <laughs> I'll take some photos because I don't think this really shows the uh, colors very well and I'm gonna make um, I'm gonna make a few more in different uh, different colours and things as well because I just think these are lovely they make lovely little gifts for friends as well thank you very much for joining me today you can see I've been at it so long it's ooh, it's actually dark outside now um, so I might take some of this stuff downstairs and make a couple of more of these this evening I'm really quite enjoying it thank you very much for joining me today I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you again really soon